Welcome back to One Sample Z. So on this tab, we're looking at Bobcat Cruise Lines. And the Bobcat Cruise Line Company wants to determine if the average customer satisfaction rating for their fleet differs from the industry standard. The industry average satisfaction rating is 8.5 out of 10, with a known standard deviation of 0.8. The company randomly samples 50 customers from various cruises and collects their satisfaction ratings. At a 0.05, which is 5% level of significance, they want to test if their average satisfaction rating is different from the industry standard. So first let's look at their samples. Remember with the cookies we did lots of samples. Here we're just going to do one. Um, and what we're going to try to decide is could this sample have come from this distribution. It would be like taking a sample of cookies and asking, hey, could these cookies have actually come from the jar? In other words, are they you know, similar enough to the cookies that are actually in the jar? So what's the comparison we're doing? Um, we're looking for X bar, which means the average of the sample for Bobcat. And so let's go ahead and calculate that. So this is equal to average of this sample. We can click on the first one and then do uh, control shift down arrow or in a Mac command shift down arrow. Select everything there if you want the shortcut where you can highlight it and that average is 8.75. Now we're given in the problem what the industry average satisfaction rating is which is 8.5. So let's type that in. And so this entire exercise now is trying to decide whether or not a, a sample whose average is 8.75 could have come, re, could reasonably have come from a distribution whose mean is 8.5. And we're going to watch this unfold. So let's start <laughs> with the sample size. So that's equals to the count of all these guys. And then we need the standard deviation. So here's an S, that would be standard deviation of a sample, and there's a sigma, which is standard deviation of the population. The problem gives us the standard deviation of the population, so that's why I'm going to pick that one. And the standard deviation of the population, which is known, is 0 0.8. And alpha, given in the problem, is 5%. Okay, so now we need to fill in uh, these items here in order to populate the normal distribution. So um, you've got here the average of the uh, industry, the, and that was given in the problem. So we can just go equals that guy. And that's going to be true all the way down. So we can just have everybody equal to that. All right. Now let's look at some of these column headings and finish them off. So first we start out with the expected variability. When we were dealing with uh, probability of a single value, the expected variability was sigma, or the standard deviation. Now it's something different. Now it's going to be what's called the standard error. SE stands for standard error. Another way to think of SE is sampling error, because it's the error of these samples, of these sample means. And what that really is, is the standard deviation of the X bars. So instead of the standard deviation of the X's, it's the standard deviation of the X bars. And that's calculated as the regular <coughs> standard deviation given in the problem divided by the square root of n. So we'll pick that one. And then um, what are we dealing with in this problem? It's not x's this time, it's x bars. So see, there's all our little x bars. And then we're dealing with z scores just like we were before. 
And now, instead of probability of x, it's probability of x bar. So this whole thing is the probability of x bar, where n, meaning the sample size, is 50. All right, now let's come over here. So the distribution is now not normal of the population. It's normal of the samples. So that's going to be normal of the of what's called mu zero, and that'll become clear in just a second. It's the hypothesized uh, mean. And the comparison value up here, if we're going to form a critical value instead of the individual value like we did before. And the case here um, is going to be uh, two left because this is going to be a two sample test we're going to basically it's a two-tailed test so we're going to have a left tail and a right tail the tail is going to start out big because we don't know how big it's going to be but as we calculate the rest of these numbers it's going to shrink okay so the expected variability is equal to sigma or the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size so there's the standard deviation divided by square root and there's the sample size So that's 0.11. And you can see that right here. There it is, SC. And you can see that as we start out at 0, then it goes plus 0.11. And then you add another one, and it's plus 0.23, because it's, you know, it's kind of rounded off. And then another 0.11, and you get to 0.34 plus. Um, but the other thing that's interesting is that now we actually have the mean plotted. So this is the actual real mean, the 8.5. And you can see it going up by 0.11 each time because that's the standard error. All right, x bar. Uh, in this case, right, um, now this is going to be a little bit tricky. This is an x bar, but this is the x bar of the critical value. So we need to start out here with alpha to figure out where that guy's going to be. So we start off here with the probability which is 5%, but we're going to do a two-tailed test, left and right. How do I know that? Because in the problem it said that they're testing if it's different. And different means you don't know if it's bigger or smaller. So that makes it two-tailed. So the probability is going to be equal to that 5% divided by 2. Then the z-score for that is going to be... Of, all right, so now you're trying to figure out, okay, now what happens? All right. What we're working on right now is probability of x to x bar. So we start out by, um, we already did the standard error. You've seen that formula. Um, now we're trying to do the left, right? That's the two-tailed test to the left. So that's going to be this formula here for the z-score, which is norm dot s dot inverse of that probability. So norm dot s dot inverse of that probability that we just typed and see how that made it smaller. And then x bar now is going to be equal to that z score times this standard error, right? Plus mu. So equals that z score times the standard error plus mu. And basically, all that's doing is calculating where this guy lands. That's the 8.28. And so what this means is that if you get a, a uh, an average that's less than 8.28, right, that would be a problem. That would be unlikely to have come <laughs> from the cookie jar, right? Um, so or unlikely to have come from this distribution of hypothesized means for Bobcat Cruise. All right, uh, let's keep going. So next line's gonna again, uh, it's the same distribution. We're looking for the other critical value, the one on the right. So this will be two to the right. The expected variability is going to be the same. So we just say equals, and then we have to do this whole probability thing again. So 
it's going to again be alpha divided by 2 to get the 2.5 and again norm dot s dot inverse but now notice that when it's to the right see there's the right hand arrow it's not just p of x that's in there it's 1 minus p of x so 1 minus p of x and then we can get the x bar as the z score times standard error. So basically, how many standard errors uh, we are away from the mean. So plus the mean. And there's your 8.72. So what we're saying is if you're less than 8.28, or greater than 8.72, you probably didn't come from the cookie jar. In other words, this sample probably wasn't part of Bobcat Cruz. And indeed, ours is 8.75, so it's not looking good. So let's go ahead and finish it off. So normal. And this one, all right, 8.75 would be to the right, right, because it would be out here. It's not going to, it's starting out big, but it's going to get smaller as we calculate these numbers. So the expected variability is the same. And now this one, we do calculate the correct direct, this sort of left to right, because we actually have the sample mean. That's this guy. So we have the sample mean, and now we can get the Z score off of the sample mean. All right. So now we're on this side. <laughs> So we're going from x bar to p of x bar. We've already got the standard error. Um, and the z score is going to be x bar minus mu divided by uh, divided by that standard error. So equals x bar minus mu divided by that standard error. And then the probability here because we're looking to the right, probability of z is 1 minus norm dot s dot dist. So 1 minus norm dot s dot dist. I'll try to get that little percent sign out of there. Um, uh, this guy, oh, I see the problem. It's because I didn't put an equal sign to start it, so it's, it's upset with me. Equals minus norm dot s dot dist that z score and this is cumulative so I put true all right so basically we're concluding that this this sample of cookies <laughs> did not come from the cookie jar meaning this sample um, did not come from the industry rating, which means the Bobcat Cruise is different than the industry rating. And in fact, Bobcat Cruise is actually bigger than the industry rating. But now let's get all formal about that. So first, let's start where we start with what's called the null hypothesis, which is no significant difference. And what we're saying is that the population mean for Bobcat is 8.5. We observed a sample mean, x bar, of 8.75 because of sampling error. That would be the null hypothesis, which would mean that those two means, the mean for Bobcat, which we don't know, by the way, um, you know, we know the sample mean, but we don't know the population mean, but the population mean for Bobcat would be the same as the population mean from industry, meaning that it actually came from the cookie jar. That would be the null hypothesis, which we already know is not true. Um, and the alternative is that there's a significant difference. The population mean for Bobcat is different from 8.5, the sample mean x bar of 8.75 may reflects a real difference in population means. So they're not equal. Now, standard error is sampling error. It measures the expected variability or difference between a sample mean and its population mean. And that, for this problem, as we mentioned before, is done by sigma x bar or the standard deviation of x bars, which is the regular standard deviation divided by the square root of n or the square root of the sample size. All right, so now we've got a test statistic. It computes a z-score for the sample mean. It indicates the number of standard errors 
that the sample mean is from the population mean. So that's a z-score. If the test statistic is beyond the critical values, that suggests x-bar is too unlikely under h0. So we would reject. Well, where is it? The test statistic is out here. There's the critical value. It's more extreme. So what we're saying is that the test statistic is greater than the positive critical value. And now the p-value test is the probability, assuming h0 is true, of observing our sample mean x-bar. If the p-value is less than alpha, that is unlikely, and we should reject h0. Well, what is the p-value? So our p-value for the test statistic is sitting out here at 1.4%, but the critical value for this tail is 2.5%, so we are less than that. So, yeah, our p-value, p of x-bar, is less than alpha. So these two always move in different directions, but they're both telling us to reject the null. So if the test statistic and p-value indicate significance, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the bobcat sample mean of 8.75 is unlikely to come from a population whose mean is 8.5. I know it probably didn't come from the cookie jar. So we are going to reject H0, reject that the that, they, that they're the same population. And if we reject the null, we accept the alternative, and we should indicate the direction of the difference. Well, we know we're bigger, right? We're out here. So we're rejecting the null, because we're in this pink area, and we're also stating that we're bigger. So we're saying that mu, that the mean of bobcat, the true mean of bobcat, which we still don't know what it is, but we're saying whatever it is, it's bigger than the mean of the industry. All right. Now let's now let's look at the graph. Approximately what raw value is the lower cutoff for a statistically significant sample mean of x bar? So in other words, down here, what raw number is kind of close to this cutoff? And it looks like 8.27. Approximately what raw value is the upper cutoff? So that'd be 8.73. Approximately how much probability is in the fail to reject range? The fail to reject is everything between the two pink regions. So that's going to end up being 95%. How did I get that? Well, We've only chopped off 2.5% on this side, 2.5% on this side, or 5% total. So what's left in the middle is 95%. What is the size of one standard error? So this is a really important question. So here you've got um, the standard error. As you move one standard error, that's 0.11. So every standard error is 0.11. So 0.11. And what's the raw value at 2.21 standard errors? So let's find 2.21. It's That turns out to be where our test statistic is. That's the z of 2.21. And the raw value at 2.21 is 8.75. Or effectively our sample mean. All right, so are we statistically significant? Yes, we are. All right, we rejected the null. We're statistically significant. And we win. So if you get everything right, you'll get some kudos here on the graph. And we'll see you in the next lesson.